Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Clatter Video and this, our special spoilers review of Fantastic Four, just to highlight the title in case you missed it. This is a spoilers review. We are going to talk about all sorts of details about the movie, assuming you have seen the movie with us. So if you don't want spoilers, why are you watching a spoiler review, you idiot? Uh, so if you want to watch this later, just put it in your favorites and come back another time. John Campier, what if people don't know what a spoiler is? It's ruining the movie, right? What if That's people what don't want to pay money to see this movie and they just want to see movie. our candid take on it? That's why you should be watching. Well, then you can do that as well. Yes. Just don't complain to me that we spoiled the spoilers. movie. It is a spoilers review. Anyway, joining me over here is Dennis Zen over here, Mr. Mark Ellis over there, John Schnapp. We're going to be talking about this movie. And uh, let's start with the shortest part of our program, what we liked about the Fantastic <laughs> Four. Dennis, let's start with you. What are some of the things that you actually think they did well in the Fantastic Four? You know what? Four? The, the first half of it I thought was pretty solid. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I remember hearing all this negative reviews and negative buzz about this movie. And as I'm sitting there in the theater with you and Wendy, I was like, man, I may be the guy who's going to have to come out of this going, I like this movie. But then, you know... <laughs> What happens halfway through, we'll talk about that later in the negative section, but I thought they built it up. I like how it was built up like a sci-fi movie more than a superhero movie, mm, and they yeah. slowly built this relationship between uh, Reed Richards and Ben Grimm, which I enjoyed, and, and just all the characters. They were setting up for, 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 for something better down the line that just didn't deliver, but for me, I, I, I like that. I felt like uh, Josh Trank, at least in, in the beginning part of the movie, had a direction that he was going in. Right. Um, I liked the relationship between Reed and Ben. I thought that was, and I was like you, like the first act of the film, I'm sitting there, I'm like, what? Why is everybody complaining about this movie? Because there are a bunch of people saw the morning screening. We saw the evening screening yeah. on Wednesday. <clears throat> so a lot of people already been talking about how bad it was. And I'm watching the first act, I'm like, this ain't bad. I mean, as far as origin stories go, this, this is pretty good. They start with the young kids. They did make the kids a lot they made them younger than yeah. they should have been. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it took me a while to get on board with the fact that maybe they'll be 25, 26, 27 year olds. Wait, they're like 18, 19 year olds. I heard what? that kid say he wanted to be Eli Manning when he grew up. Yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, what year? Uh, yeah, are we? How Has old Eli is Manning this? won a Super Bowl yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe he's talking about his favorite collegiate player, Eli Manning. I mean, I don't know. But I thought that relationship, the opening as far as an origin story goes pretty well. I love the actor who played, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Storm. Uh, what's Baxter? Called? Right. Uh, I think his no, name is Reggie Cathay, or I can't pronounce his name. He's from. Um, he was in uh, House of Cards, and he was in. Uh, he was in, I think, The Wire as well. Yeah, I, I just and you know, you know, Johnny, you're my son. He's got he's got <laughs> a great kind of voice. I I dug the voice. I liked him in that role. Um, so yeah, there were there were there were things. Look, and, and I'll say this. I said this before. I said it again. Hey, this this Fantastic Four. I think if you really step back, take a deep breath, this Fantastic Four is better than the other two Fantastic Fours amongst all of its problems, which we will get to momentarily. But that, as many of you have pointed out, is really not saying much at all. It's like saying, oh, look, that's the least terrible car crash. Um, <laughs> and, and that's kind of the case. Anyway, what are some things that you did like about the movie? It's a very Mark? deep breath we're going to have to take. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you guys to a point where I didn't love the first half of this movie either. I was actually, I thought that it, it was plotting along and it was doing okay and needed a great third act to salvage it. But the beginning, you're right, it had at least potential, particularly the relationship. I liked seeing Reed Richards interact with Sue. I thought that that, would, that looked like a promising relationship initially, and and then, like everything else in the movie, it just kind of fell in upon itself, like the House of Usher. But the relationships initially <laughs> built up to the point. And the way that this philanthropist scientist nurtured these kids, I liked seeing that yeah. it was almost like an orphanage, except for really talented, genius kids who are working on something, even though it's totally not in the realm of believability at all. I don't necessarily need that in a comic book movie where they're like, oh, you're 19? Here, teleport yourself to another dimension. Good luck. Like, <laughs> I, I don't need to necessarily buy everything. I can forgive some of those plot points. However, the rest of the movie made me hate even those things that I was giving a pass to initially. Schnapp, some things you liked about the film. Yeah, I'm with you guys as far as like, you know, coming in, hearing all this negative uh, buzz, reading a bunch of negative reviews, hearing a, a bunch of behind the scenes stuff that went on. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to put all that aside and just try to see this film as like, look, I love comic book movies. I love the Fantastic Four. I didn't like the other movies. How's this movie gonna stack up? Gotta say, I really enjoyed the first like 50 minutes. I actually liked 
the tone of the film. I like the way they were making it science fiction, added that little horror element once they come back from this uh, Planet Zero area and they're like all, you know, Reed is stretched out. The thing is this thing of rocks. It was definitely like if, they, if that happened to you, you'd be freaked out. So the way they played the characters, I felt it really worked. That's, that's when it ended for me. But I, I loved everything up to that point. I'd also say the way the thing looks, the effects wise, once he turns into the big rock creature, mm. those looked really good on screen. A lot I of agree. the other yeah, effects I, liked I, thought, well, I yeah. thought weren't weren't up to par, but the thing in particular, the way he talked, the way he sure. moved, the way he fought, that was a good thing. I also, oddly enough, I also like the way he sounded. Because you think, yeah. mm -hmm. well, it's a movie and he's a big monster, so therefore his voice is going to be Batman, you know, or whatever. And they didn't. They just went with his voice that was more modulated because mm -hmm. of the stone, I guess, and sort of, I don't know what the science behind it is. Right. He had, he had but, stone throat is Stone the technical throat term. is the technical term. I liked what they did with his voice as well. I mean, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Also, I, I forgot to mention that the acting performances overall were, were pretty good. I mean, yeah. we'll talk about right. the ending later, but the actual performances before they actually get transformed and get their powers, I thought were pretty solid. All right. Now let's get into the long part of the show that we call the things we did not like about this movie. Now, I, I'll start this one off with a couple things. So I know a bunch of you guys will have different points than the ones I have. Number one, unlike the first part of this movie, that the thing I liked about it, I think we all said the relationship between Reed and Ben was mm -hmm. was really well produced. Those starting moments of the relationship between Reed and Sue was good. When this movie looked at the humanity of these characters and focused on the human drama of them, which is necessary, the film was clicking. Once they abandoned that completely, the film started to fall apart. I felt no chemistry between any of these characters. They tried to introduce a little chemistry between, you know, Johnny Storm and the thing at the end, the Human Torch, the thing at the very last scene of the movie. It's like, too little, too late, pals. You should have been giving us, get us into these characters if you want us to get into this movie. And it's like, Fox is completely went, Bleh. no, screw that. We just, let's just get some action. There was not enough action in this film. I mean, that's the first thing I said when we came out of the theaters. It's like, there were not enough action beats. They had that, and I should have put this in my pocket, Positives. There was a very short scene in the forest of Mr. Fantastic taking out those soldiers. That was a nice looking scene, but it was so short and without context. And it was little. Then we see, oh, the human torch flying for a second and shooting down a drone. That was your action. That's your big action set piece. And then you get to the final big action set, set piece, which was just garbage. Just absolutely horrible. Also, let me get into some nitpicky things, but these things stuck with me through the whole movie. We meet, we hear Dr. Storm saying, my son Johnny can build anything. Really? Really? Because our first introduction to the guy in the movie was him putting together this piece of crap Toyota car that blew its engine and was trying to wreck. I don't think this is the guy qualified to build an interdimensional transportation device. I'm not getting in that machine. <laughs> my son Johnny can build anything. <laughs> really? That just blew my mind. And then, then, guys from the government and the military there is like, oh, we have an interdimensional transportation device. Okay, let's leave it completely unguarded. It's okay. We got these four teenagers over here. Apparently drinking. No one's going to keep an eye on this thing. Right. There's no Especially security. one that we don't trust and kicked out of the school yeah. before for causing trouble. Yeah, and we, not only that, they let in Ben Grimm at the end like, oh yeah, oh, you just, just, just let, oh, him, let him come me. in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, don't he's, worry guys, I have a plus one to the other dimension. <laughs> yeah. It's like going to a par Comic Con party or something. I got a plus one. <laughs> I mean, so that was just astounding to me. And then Doctor Doom, look, I didn't like, unlike a lot of people, I didn't hate everything about Doctor Doom. But Dr. Doom has now been by himself on Earth Zero, whatever it is they call that, that other dimension. He's by himself over there. So he's divided this planet. How does he know he can fry a guy's face? He hasn't had any guys to fry faces off of. But he just shows up and goes, I know I can just go, me dead. Speaking of which, if Dr. Doom has the ability to look at you in the face and go, eh, and your face just explodes, why the hell was he having fisticuffs with Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> like, well, what was, no, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to go Mickey Ward on you. When he can just look at them and go, Boo. I mean, they just lost all sense of character. They lost all sense of direction. They lost all sense of logic. And I know we're talking about a superhero film. Yeah, but even within superhero films, you set your own rules of logic once you set your rules of what's logical in this world, stay within those rules. And they, I just, anyway. Mark, 
Uh, was was there? And I know you actually really like the film, but was there anything <laughs> about Fantastic Four you didn't appreciate? It is one of the worst big budget movies I've ever seen in my entire life. And unlike something like Transformers Four, when you watch it and it's this beast that you think is mocking you and you're upset <laughs> afterwards, I wasn't upset after I saw Fantastic Four. I felt sorry for it in the same way that I would feel bad if I hit a dog in the street and took it to the <laughs> vet and was like, "Please put this thing to sleep. Get everything out of its misery," because this movie is a train wreck, especially the third act. I didn't like the first two acts and any logic or anything that it had going for it was completely halted by that but that, that momentum was done and it was like a fat baby on the beach wrecking a sandcastle and we had to completely start from scratch and what we got at the end that paltry excuse for an action climax was ridiculous and the worst part about dr doom wasn't the fact that that he he talked weird or he had bad fight scenes it's that they wasted a villain that they could have had potentially in more films i'm not a fantastic four fan and i hated this movie if you are a Fantastic Four fan, you are going to be so upset. You're not going to know what to do with yourself. It is a it is an incredible waste of talent. It's like watching a sports team that has a lot of good players on the field, and for some reason, they just cannot get it together, and they get blown out every week. O.J. Simpson has had a better third act in his career than the third <laughs> act of Fantastic Four. Wow. Mic drop. Okay, Dennis, <laughs> some of the things that maybe you didn't like about the film. Uh, well, let's start off. Yeah, the, I like the first half. Uh, but then once it started, when they're about to go to the interdimensional time travel, or not time tra travel, it got kind of wonky for me. You had the, like, Sue Storm doesn't even go on the trip with them. Yeah, that she, was she get, weird. She just gets the power because she just happened to be near it when they came back. And then I think the part that really started off for me was the one year later where they dropped, it's like they got back, they got into the facility, they're doing all the stuff, like freaking out. That part was good, like Schnepp said, where they were like feeling like freaks and monsters. Then they go to the one year later thing, which skips over some of the best parts. That could have been interesting. Well, also, <laughs> the best part of origin stories, in, in which uh, Josh Trank did well in Chronicle, was discovering your powers. How do you use your powers? How do you, you know, feel like get, like, the limit, test the limits of them? None of that. They just go straight from that to Reed Richards leaving to one year later. And they're like, oh, Johnny Storm's doing this. And th there's a bunch of missing scenes as well that we saw in the trailer that weren't there. And then, yeah, the the way the whole half movie is like a first act and then the second act is like maybe like 20 or 30 minutes and then the last act is like so short dr doom just shows up the costume for that is ridiculous i thought it was terrible and and the one thing i know the the end sequence where they fight is bad but one thing i really noticed about it was the sound design and mixing of that you could tell they were shooting in a large green screen studio because of the way the sound was mixed. Mm. You couldn't hear like the, like the world itself. It was like... There was I no could, atmosphere. There was no the atmosphere. Sound. All I would hear is like, oh, yeah, I can tell Miles Teller's on set talking because that's how they mixed it. And so, yeah, everything about the ending and then that the, the extra ending at the end. The oh, whole, that's so bad. I, what did you say? I said it's fantastic. Yeah. I know, God. That was so painful. Yeah. So painful. Schnepp, you just saw the movie last night? Yes, I did. Your, what, what didn't work for you in this film? Um, I think everything after Doctor Doom showed up, to be honest with you. I really I felt like the movie was working for me, and I liked the darker take. You know, I mean, as a comic book fan, I've read happy Fantastic Four comics and dark Fantastic Four comics. There's all different writers and artists have had their spin on the Fantastic Four, and we've seen different movie variations. This is obviously way different than the other two Fantastic Four movies, way different, but uh, it lost me because Doctor Doom shows up, he's not even a character. You don't even get to know his character when he's introduced in the first place. And I, I remember hearing all these rumors about him being called uh, Dumashev, yeah. and he was a hacker. But actually what he really was, if you watch the movie and you're like, huh, he's got this setup and he's like doing anti-government stuff. So he's kind of against the government that takes over the Fantastic Four once they get their powers. So if they let those scenes actually play out a little bit more and not cut all of them, because it feels like all that stuff's truncated. There's yeah. no introduction to any of these characters that are is done actually properly in the first 50 minutes. You're like, okay, I'm just trying to piece together things, and then it just all falls apart. I honestly feel like there must be another 30 minutes that's just sitting on the floor that at least might explain and make the first 50 minutes way better. 
I don't know what to say really about Dr. Doom. He shows up, he blows up a dude's head. There's a cool scene of him walking through the hallways, blowing up people's heads. I don't even know why. Why is he so angry? Why does he want to go back and destroy Earth? It's like we were talking about this earlier. He just wants to go back to his floaty planet and soak in the green ooze or whatever. It's just they ruined that character so badly. And then they have a big, giant, dumb fight at the end. All the characters betray everything that was set up about them in the end when they go to the negative zone world. They're not talking like real people they're talking like superheroes we should all fight them together you do yeah. this it's like since when did reed richards who's like 18 who's an egghead start you know being a superhero it's all of it was just horrible that and at last what point did they decide it's okay to go to the negative zone without our hazmat suits well at what point did they figure that out the that, that was okay that, the other negative thing i i felt was the way that they i i didn't hate dr doom's look like I'd seen the look of him before and it was like, we all talked about it. He looked kind of like a garbage man or something. But then when you see the origin, he, his, that's actually his mask shrinking onto his face. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. And they were like, just trying to make it work organically. He's not a dude wearing the steel outfit. How do we make him look like that iconic character without having to have that? So I get it. And I like that he had that glowing energy. And honestly, if like just if you take out all the other scenes and you just saw that one scene of him walking through the hallway and blowing up people's heads, you're like, wow, that's like a horror movie or something. But unfortunately, they didn't develop the character. In fact, they cut out the scene where he's talking to Reed Richards that's in every mm -hmm. single trailer mm -hmm. where it's like, what's coming? Doom is coming or change yeah. is coming. He says change is coming. And Doom is no, like, coming. Doom. Oh, well, no, that's yeah. in the movie. But what Reed Richards is standing over him it, and he's oh, on no, the that's gurney. the scene that's in the trailer. Yeah, he goes, Reed Richards goes, he's, yeah, it's coming. He says, what's coming? Doom. Or he yeah. says, like, change is coming in the trailer. Whatever. It's not in the movie. The All these scenes of of uh, of the thing j j being airdropped and like fighting in like some other Guns, country. And, and, and Reed Richards being the guy the commanding that attack. And it was like, oh, you let's see them use their powers. And like Dennis said, it's like, w w when I, I think when I, this movie really lost me was when it said one year later. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? What are we talking <laughs> right. about? That's when everything lost plausibility from the way the government was handling these mutant freaks to the way that even, uh, even the scientists, the, the, the father figure to all of them was treating them and the way that they started interacting with each other. It just lost, this movie lost its way so bad it should have left a trail of breadcrumbs before it went into the woods to find its way back home because it was an embarrassment to the comic book and everything else especially in that last third act what if it began one year later and you're on a plane and they show that airdrop the thing airdropping you know what i mean that's a way at least it depends how they structured it in right. their I mean, context. The I mean, what yeah. ifs are, are out of the, you know, who knows if they're ever going to do it. You don't really bother me, too, speaking of that whole, like, the one year later thing. Okay, so they find Miles, or they, they find Reed Richards, and Ben's all pissed off at him. It's like, at what point, hey, guess what? If I'm Reed Richards, I'm, I'm going to say, hey, by the way, moron, you know what I've been doing for the last year in this cabin in the woods? Trying to figure out a way to go back to that zone so I can cure your stupid ass. But instead, he just stays quiet about that, doesn't mention that to anybody. And they, they, did they not go in and investigate his little hut and what he was doing there? And then, then, at the end, the only one who's happy to see him and goes up, it's Johnny Storm. Oh, happy to see you, brother. They maybe spent two minutes together in the movie beforehand, but Johnny's, oh, man, good to see you, blah, blah. It's like, what? You, you guys didn't even know each other yet. I mean, it's just... Yeah, man, this, it's such and a. And then Sue Storm and Johnny Storm's father dies, right? Yeah, and, and they, then get they over don't it mention quick. it ever again. And yeah. then they have that scene at, where they're talking to the government. And they're just like, "Yeah, what? You know, what if we say no? Just say yes. You know, say it's like, yes. yeah. It's well, on our we, terms now. We were talking about this earlier. I was like, well, if they had a funeral scene, <laughs> it would make it even more of a bummer. Right. Like already it had a dark tone, but like then they had a funeral scene at the end about the dad. But at least that would have added a little more character moments. And it's instead of these like extra out of character cartoony that ending tack on to them yeah. at their new facility oh no it would have been jokes and stuff it was what it, it would have been great if they were at the dad's funeral and then they're like man this is totally not fantastic <laughs> oh, <Wait. laughs> yeah it's just that the movie got worse yeah. and worse as it goes along and you can hear all those things about behind the <laughs> scenes whether it's a studio meddling and all that stuff i tend to side with the artist versus the studio i think there's enough blame to throw at everybody here including simon kinberg josh Trank, the actors even i felt like mailed it in after a while like they knew that this thing was a was a sinking ship like miles teller at the end when he's like, like he's on the floor and it's just it felt like like what dennis said i felt like i was watching a dress rehearsal as opposed to a real movie so if you can if you want to give the brunt of the blame to the studio and the way that they've been hiding hiding it in the way they probably meddled in the production, that's fine. I just know that my job is to tell the fans, 
if you should see a movie or not. And you should spend your hard-earned money on the, the movie and the popcorn and the two hours of your life. And it's a no all the way across the board. Oh, I think you absolutely have to see this movie just to say you saw this movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, and you know, it would have been a better scene too if at the funeral and, and the mother says, you know, in college, your dad's football nickname was Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, this would be a great tribute to Finn. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Let's give this thing a score out of 10. So, Dennis, just wrapping up your feelings on the film and a score out of 10. Uh, this is a film, okay, I didn't hate it. I was so disappointed by it. I really, in, I, I, okay, I didn't love the first half, but I enjoyed that first half, and I thought it was building to something. It wasn't action-orientated, and a lot of people who did like the movie are complaining, well, it's not supposed to be the Avengers. That's not what I was looking for. I, I appreciate the dark tone. I didn't care if it, if it was fun or funny. Mm -hmm. All I cared about is that it was building to a point, and then it just drops off. And so I, I'm, I'm going to have to go give it a four. I think out of out of 10. Uh, I, I think the first half saves it a little bit, but then the ending is just so terrible. I thought I was watching like a one of those B movies on sci-fi. Like it was mm, that yeah, bad. Yeah. Like That's Sharknado how, was going to start after the credits. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I was just like, what am I watching? I I, I don't know. So I, I, I also, though, recommend people go check it out just so they can say... You got to be part of the experience. Ex exactly. To judge for yourself. All right. For me... Um, we live in, I'm reading so much stuff online. Look, we live in a, I call it a tens mentality era right now, where if anybody likes a movie, they just say 10, 10, 10, 10. And if you dislike a movie, it's all oh, zero, 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 zero. There is, there are good things and redeemable things in this movie. There, there are. We've, we've all highlighted some of those things. So I, this is not a zero film. This is not, you know, like I still believe it's better than the other two. But again, I know what you're all saying, and I agree. That's not saying much at all. Um, but there were moments that there were elements that worked, things that worked. But ultimately, those things working just lead up and increase our disappointment by the time the whole thing's over. And you realize not only was this a, a poor movie, but a missed opportunity because you could have done something really cool here. It's especially like you were pointing out with all the pieces of the puzzle you had there in place. So overall, not the worst movie I've seen this year, but a huge disappointment for me. I'm going to give it a three out of 10. I'm going two out of 10 because there was some potential at least, and I was enjoying myself for a little while in this movie, but the way that the ending and the last act cut corners when a superhero movie is supposed to start to shine and have a great action set piece and introduce us to a really scary villain and have these heroes come together, it all filled miserably at that test. I think Josh Trank's going to make a lot of good movies in his career. I think Simon Kimber's going to write a lot of good stuff. All these actors are fantastic, no pun intended, but it did not come together at this movie at all. Do not spend your money on this movie. Go do something else with your life. Schnepp? I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10 because, to be honest with you, I enjoyed the first half of it. And then seeing how it just fell apart at the end was, it didn't, I, when I left the theater, I was like, okay, you know, it's like, is this a Green Lantern to me? Not particularly. I could see them doing a Fantastic Four number two or another another version, another sequel. If it makes $50 million this weekend, I still think they will make a Fantastic Four But I, Because two. I think that the characters introduced and this tone that's there in the film you know, I don't know how they would carry forward with, I mean, you'd have to make some really strong decisions as far as like who was responsible for that ending and get rid of them, you know, or whatever. It's like, I don't really know what to do with it, but it's like, as being a Fantastic Four fan, it delivered on on certain elements, failed on a lot of other elements, so I'm 50-50 on it. I, can I recommend you to see it? I'd see it just like the way I went and saw the Broadway Spider-Man movie before, and it was before they closed it down. I saw the Julie Taymor version because I wanted to see what everyone was talking about. Was it really good? Was it really bad? It was half and half. They closed it, and eventually it shuttered. Will this movie ever get a director's cut? Probably not. So it's really up to you to see this film in the theater or see it on whenever, however you see it. But I give it a five. See, I, I don't think there's a chance in, in hell that you're going to get a sequel to this movie because it's one thing if you make a bad movie, but you at least limp to the finish line and you give us some hope. Something like Maze Runner, which I was liking for a while, then the ending was clearly setting up for a sequel. This thing couldn't even set up for a sequel correctly. So I don't even think it crossed the finish line. It was like watching somebody in the Olympics pull their hamstring and instead of somebody helping them to the finish line, they just quit. I don't know, man. I, I think you were really overlooking that cliffhanger when it goes when Dr. Richards goes, wait, I got it, and then the screen goes black. And we're <laughs> what all was like, he gonna say? What was he gonna say? What was he I gonna think say? A what lot are they gonna name the team? Yeah, I think I a don't. lot of people come back just to see that. I think you're I think, I think you you know what, say like, the sinister six and then hold up two tiny people. <laughs> wait, you know what I'm surprised about though was there was no mention or reference to any type of crossover universe with the X-Men. No mention of mutants or anything like that. I thought maybe they'd at least And Brian Singer's going 
like <laughs> hint at it because that, that's the whole thing. They want to make a shared universe, but there was nothing like that no, at all. And when no I go into any now. comic book movie, if I'm going to a, to a screening, I ask whoever's running the, the, the ship. I'm like, hey, do I need to stay for a post credit scene? And I ask them, they're like, no. Like they, they were like, why would you even think that you want to stay as, up to the end? Like, no, don't worry about it. Well, then the, the big question is, why is Fox hiding this movie from everybody that we've been asking for the last two weeks? We now have our answer. So there you have it, folks. It's a two, a three, a four, and a five. So <laughs> four, the Human Torch, the Thing, Mister Fantastic, and Sue Storm. I'm happy with that title. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, what? Of course, uh, Dennis Zen over here, Mark Ellis, John Schnepp, myself, John Canby. Thank you to Wendy, who's back there running the show for us today. And thank you for you guys. The most important thing is not what do the four idiots up here think <laughs> about the Fantastic Four. What did you think about it? Make sure you've seen them. We don't be one of these idiots who just jumps in and says, "Oh, this movie's crap." When we know you didn't see it. If you've seen the movie, jump in and let us know your thoughts. What things worked for you, even if you hated it? What things didn't work? for you even if you liked it let us know your thoughts always two sides of the coin thanks a lot for joining us guys my name is john kbf for collider video and until next time bye bye